Uh, I hope you're doing well. In this video, I'll be showing you how to work with the rectangle component. Now, it's very basic and it's one of the most useful components in Qt QML. And let's get started. So, as you can see, here's a rectangle. Now, obviously, a rectangle needs three things, right? First, it need it needs a color. Otherwise, it will be shown as transparent. Now, let's set the color to a version of red right if you hover over it you can see it's red but if you run the application like you will see that you won't be seeing any rectangle right now like there won't be any red color rectangle now why is that because everything in cute like every component in cute requires some certain width and height like it won't be using its own like implicit width or height like for example if you have worked with html or css you know that every item whether it is block or whether it's in line block right it has its certain width like but in cute like it you have to provide a width and height otherwise it won't be shown in the screen right so let's provide it some width of less than 100 and height of less than 100 and then run the application basically i mean that you need to provide some width and height otherwise it won't be displayed right now as you can see you can observe that there is a red rectangle right now what i want to do is i want to cover this whole white window with this red color like i want to fill this whole background with the red color so one way of doing this is just simply copy pasting these values and now when you run the application you can see that the whole background is covered with the red color right but here's the problem right if you try to expand the size of the application window if you try to expand the window size you will see that the windows size changes but the rectangles size is fixed right now this is not what we desire right we want the rectangle size to also change if the windows size changes right now how to achieve it there is a very simple rule which is called like calling by the parents values for like let's say this is a rectangle right now what is the parent of this rectangle this window uh, let me clarify it like, like let's let me show you what parent means now uh, let me show you some components if you don't recognize it like don't worry i'm just showing you for the just understanding purpose like this component right the parent of this one is this rectangle right this text and this image they're siblings right because they're in the same level so these are siblings but the parent of text is also this rectangle and the parent of this image is also this rectangle right now coming to this rectangle its parent is this one its parent is this one and this one has no parent right because this is the root element anyway so similarly the parent of this rectangle is this window right just the component just above this one right so one way of doing this is i will say the width of this rectangle is nothing but the parent's width and the height is nothing but the parent's height now what will this do see observe give it some time to run and now when you like increase or decrease the size you will observe that the as the windows size and width and height changes the rectangles width and height also change now how does this work see we know that when we when we run the application and when we increase or decrease the width of the window like by dragging this part this width and this height changes right and since this width is binded with this parents width i mean this windows width like we are saying that hey this width will be nothing but this one right if this changes this will also change right we are binding it in a way we are saying that hey if this one changes also change this one right so this is called binding now instead of doing this like manually for width and height there is a anchors property called anchors dot fill and parent i'll show you what anchors are in the later video i think you can also like watch my previous unorganized list playlist like i've shown you how anchors anchors work but i'll organize it more and i'll explain it more clearly but yeah this also works 
now so either way you can do this uh, either you can like set the width and height to be parents width and height or you can directly use a simple like from like you can set a simple property anchors dot fill parent either of this works right so now this is about rectangles now instead of this manual color like can you use a gradient now we can use a gradient right there is a property called gradient and inside that we will provide a gradient component now you don't need to remember all of this just search for gradient cute human just a minute but yeah like it has two standard properties which you need to remember one is called orientation and the other is called like gradient stop so i don't know why my net is so slow but give me a minute yeah this one yeah see a rectangle with certain width and height which is necessary and then a gradient and let's copy this one i'll explain to you what position is and let's indent it properly yeah now let's run the application once yeah as you can see like there is a gradient now from top to bottom it's red then yellow then green right and between each of them we are seeing that the colors are mixing together right so red yellow green from top to bottom now you might be thinking like hey what if i want my gradient to not be from top to bottom but instead to be from left to right right for that there is a property in q gradient uh, which is called orientation and we have to set it to q dot horizontal not not this one horizontal yeah now if you run the application you will see that the gradient pattern occurs from left to right see it's from left to right now what if you want the previous like gradient option you have to set it to vertical again or just leave it uh, as default like by default it's obviously vertical right so now what are these things like let's see what this gradient stop is right now don't be confused like don't be overwhelmed like gradient is the only last thing you need to know about rectangles right uh, i'm telling you this in detail so that later like if you might need it like you won't have to search it again and again right so anyway see the position starts from 0.0, .0 and ends at 1.0 right so if this is a scale let's say this is a rectangle right this is 0.0 .0, this is 1.0 now this orientation is horizontal what if this was vertical then this would be 0.0, .0 and this would be 1.0 right but for simplicity let's take orientation as horizontal right from left to right right now this is 0.0, .0. what if i had one point in between in 0 0.5 this is red this is yellow and this is green let's uh, remove this 0.33 and set it to 0.5 right so it's easier to understand right now what this does is it says that this part uh, let me change the color this part will be red right and this one just a minute. this part from 0.5 this, this from this point it will be fully yellow right and what will happen is it will slowly 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 mix together with this red for example this is still red and this is still yellow but slowly at this point around here both yellow and red will start to mix together right this is fully yellow this part was fully red this part is fully yellow and around here both of them will start to mix together the same goes from yellow to green right this is fully yellow this is fully green and around this part both of them start to mix now don't get confused let's make it more simple let's say we have only two points 0 0.0 and 1.0 right what will happen let's say this is yellow and this is red right so up to here it will be dominantly yellow right 
up to here up to here it will be dominantly red and in this part it will be a mixture of both right so now uh, i hope you are starting to like understand what's going on right so what if i want till here it will be blue here it will be red here it will be green right so what color might occur here so it will be a mixture of red and green here it will be a mixture of blue and red this part will be fully red this part will be fully green this part will be fully blue right now i hope that's clear to you like how positions work and color works right but if you observe this is linear gradient right like for example this is very simple gradient uh, if you want something more complex right for example like this one where the colors are like a wave right or this one so you cannot like achieve it directly using gradient so the only way to like set the background of the rectangle to be this one is to use an image right i'll remove this part i'll set an image i'll say the anchors should fill the parent this is exactly the same as setting width and height to be parents width and height right so i'll say anchors to fill parent so that it fully covers the parent rectangle and the source of this uh let's add a new image no first let's i already have that image downloaded i called it bag.jpg i'll in my project i will go to the images folder and paste it and i will go here and i will add an existing file yes to all now the image is added copy the url because this is the qml the ui part the qml part so copy the url for this image not the path path is for cpp file right in the source add it and check that you have set auto rcc to on yes mine is on so let's run the application once and as you can see the image is like the rectangle is filled with a gradient which is nothing but the image let's give it some other width and height let's say width of uh, 100 and height of let's say 200 and this run the application once to see if this is correctly working or not right and yeah as you can see like the image is covering the rectangle right so uh, that's it for the rectangle part and there are certain more like properties which i will like teach you later when i teach you about mouse areas and anchoring and x and y coordinates and other stuff right so uh, thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video take care